Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 430. What peptide treatments will you need as you age? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So we've been talking uh, in in several episodes uh, about the conference that we attended on peptides Mm -hmm. to get better education about new things that we're learning and, and that are changing. And what seems to be the message, the takeaway, for me at least as a layman, is that hormone replacement is critical to healthy aging, Mm -hmm. but that there are things that hormone replacement isn't enough for. Mm -hmm. And that what they've discovered is that there are specific peptides, which are protein change, Mm -hmm. that assist the hormones in the communication to the cells of the body to provide the, the ingredients that we need to live healthy, longer lives. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, you are. And they're, they're relatively new in, in the world of uh, endocrinology and the world of medicine. We have just found these little tiny pieces of proteins that work inside our bodies that uh, provide us with specific um, uh, different kinds of anti-aging effects. So they keep us young. They keep us functioning. They keep us... Uh, from having certain symptoms. So we've discovered them, we've isolated them, and now compounding pharmacies are making them in a form that you can take and have it work. Now, peptides are part of a protein, right? So if you just ate them or took them as a pill, uh, just a regular pill, then they would be uh, digested just like a protein and you would get no effect. However, We give them as a subcutaneous or a very tiny kind of uh, injection under the skin somewhere on the abdomen, and it goes directly into the bloodstream and works. And now... So it doesn't go through the the blood-brain barrier, through the stomach... uh, It doesn't go through the stomach or the the liver, but it can go through the blood-brain barrier. Okay. So these are very tiny proteins, so they can go there. There are some of them that act on on the brain, as well as act on the the peripheral parts of your body. Like um, Victoza is a uh, prescription and an FDA-approved peptide for diabetes. Okay. And you know that we're going to talk about it in our discussion today, but it is one of the ones that has been embraced and then tested and then used as uh, an FDA drug for diabetes, but it also not only goes to your uh, pancreas and your liver and works there to help keep your blood sugar down, it goes to all your cells in your body to make you insulin sensitive, but it also goes to your brain to make you not as hungry, make you feel full. So it it does cross the blood-brain barrier. Now, not all of them have a function in the brain, so not all of them, even if they cross, they're not going to do anything. So they can go wherever the body needs them. Right. Okay. So, and so, even small, small doses, which are, they're very small shots, small doses actually can, can change everything for some people. So are peptides then generally uh, prescription drugs that the FDA has to approve, or are they things that you can get uh, through a doctor's office for And specific, compounded through a pharmacy, made for you. Through a compounding pharmacy, mm-hmm. not, not from a major mass-produced pharmacological. Well, they're catching on. Yeah. They found they found Victoza. Victoza is a peptide. Right. They have made tons of money on uh, Norvo uh, Noro Nov, Noro Nov Disc is the is the name of the company, and they make it, and they've made a lot of money on it. It's very expensive, though. Right. So that's one peptide that's been through the FDA process that does work and is very popular. The others that we are going to discuss today, you have to get from a compounding pharmacy. They work great, but you have to fill your own little syringe and you have to give yourself the shot. It doesn't come in a pen. Okay, they're not mass produced. And some of them come, are starting to come in oral, uh, an oral pill, but it has to be coated so that your body doesn't, your stomach doesn't digest it. Right. And then it has to be refrigerated? Yes, and they have to be refrigerated. You can have it out of the refrigerator, but not in a hot environment for seven days. But 
we prefer it to be in the refrigerator. It works better if it is. Okay. Well, let's go through. But there are over 200 peptides that have been identified. Most of them don't even have names yet. They haven't found kitschy kind of names that will mm-hmm. help them sell, like Victoza <laughs> yeah. as a name. Mm-hmm. So they have uh, number or label uh, letter uh, identifiers. Right. And so right. there are five that we want to talk about today that you are beginning to use in your office mm-hmm. and get good results from. And they so, are used as an adjunct to the hormone replacement that you do. The hormone replacement is the critical first step. It's then the, the foundation. peptides come in and on top of that. People who don't have all their symptoms uh, uh, cured with the testosterone and the estrogen or just testosterone, then w- when they have special problems, special issues, we use some of these peptides to try to help those issues. So, well, like a special problem is diabetes, right? which is becoming a, a, an mm-hmm. epidemic in America. Mm-hmm. Hormone replacement doesn't protect you completely from getting diabetes, type 2 at any rate. Mm-hmm. And so the Victoza that you were talking about is one of the special peptides that helps people uh, when they're pre-diabetic not become diabetic. Right. And even after they're diabetic, it does help them lose weight. And type 2s, if, if type 2 diabetes, if you lose weight, usually you don't need as much medicine for your diabetes. Mm-hmm. That isn't always the case, but it is sometimes the case. Right. So that's one of the best known peptides. But one of the peptides that I think I'll probably use the most is called <clears throat> BPC. Um, 157. And it's BBC is body protecting compound, but because of the long litany of, of words, they when they talk about it at the convention, they were talking about BPC, and everybody knows BPC 157 mm-hmm. is the body protecting compound. So what? Why is that so universal? It's it. We used to make a lot of it in our stomach, mm-hmm. basically, and then absorb it into our system. We as we age, we don't make as much. But the reason it's so um, it's the favorite peptide is because it works on so many different systems. If you have um, if you have an injury, then you'll heal faster with this. If you have a stomach problem, your stomach problem is treated, cured with this. Wow. It prevents stomach ulcers. It prevents um, any kind of damage to the GI tract. Mm-hmm. So, so it helps people with autoimmune diseases that attack the GI tract and other autoimmune diseases as well. Does it help with the acid reflux? Yeah, it does have help with acid so, reflux. So because I was reading yeah. the material that you sent uh-huh. me to read, and, and the Victoza sometimes mm-hmm. causes acid yes, reflux. Yes, it does. So That's would the you only take side these effect in, of it. In combination, you could take them in combination. They, they don't. They don't have any reason why you couldn't take them together. Okay. But that would help the acid reflux. Right. But so many people take Pepsid and um, right over the counter stuff, or even prescription stuff for for uh, acid stomach or mm-hmm. or to prevent them from uh, having some kind of a an ulcer in the future. This would be instead of that. And it doesn't cause you to have problems absorbing the rest of your medicines like those prescription medications do. So you say that it helps heal heart and joint damage. Mm-hmm. Does that then reduce the number of heart attacks and the number of like knees and, and shoulders that have to be replaced? Yes, and sometimes, sometimes it does. But it would if you had a heart attack, it doesn't actually clean out the vessels to make you not have a damage. I mean, a heart attack is when you have... Basically, it's it's a, a vessel that gets clogged up with plaque and fat, and then you can't get blood to the part of the muscle that beats, and that muscle dies. That's a heart attack, okay? So mm-hmm. that's what gives you the chest pain, is when that piece of muscle is, is hypoxic and dies. So what this does is helps you heal from that heart attack so that that muscle can come back. Oh, wow. As you get, you know, usually if you have a heart attack, you're going to have a bypass or you're going to have stents to open up the blood flow, but that muscle may never grow back. It may never get better. So then if it doesn't, then you're left with shortness of breath and inability to do a lot of things. So we want you to heal from that, and this would be one of the things that would help you heal. Wow. That sounds like a miracle drug. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? They actually all do as you read about them and learn about them. I know, it's... it's how come we didn't know this before? But, you know, testosterone does in in middle to old age people help hearts uh, heal because it's anabolic. It helps the muscle regrow. But this is on top of that and, and, yeah. and augments that. 
Right. The testosterone helps muscles all over your body. It helps mm -hmm. you reestablish firm muscles so that you don't have the same balance issues. You aren't going to fall. You mm -hmm. don't have to be wheelchair ridden. Mm -hmm. But this helps the heart muscle. This helps the heart muscle. So this, well, is, so, so this is a little different in that way. But there are so many people who have um, knee, knee damage, hip damage, that it would be helpful if we could have something to take to help your knees before you need a replacement. Right. Because there's many stages of knee damage or, or hip damage before you need to have it completely replaced. And this would be one of the ways you could heal faster. Well, the knee damage comes from all kinds of events. I mean, playing in sports, you torque your leg, you turn, you get hit, you stumble and fall. But it also comes from having too much weight. That's and, true. And so in addition to the hormones and the peptides, we will continue to talk to people about weight management and diet mm -hmm. because all of these things come together in the most magical way <laughs> to make you healthy or make you dead. You know, it, <laughs> If you don't do it. <laughs> if you don't do the things that yeah. you need to do. And mm -hmm. that's what you're all about is helping people survive as long as they can in the most healthy and mm -hmm. functional way. That's right. And, and these additional treatments are really exciting to learn about. Yeah, they really are. I mean, they're, yeah. they're something that that the um, maybe maybe the drug companies have found these and have turned them down or are testing them now, but sure sure as heck when they do, they're going to be a lot more expensive than they are when you get a compounding pharmacy to make them. Right. Because they're not they're not inexpensive. But when I go to the pharmacy now and they say that drug will be thirteen hundred dollars for a month, yeah. I'm horrified. I mean, yeah. a, a drug that's been around forever. You know, and, and it's $1,300 yeah. for a month for 30 pills. That's insane, and that's what's happening. Well, so when they say this is $200 a month, well, and it does all the things that two or three other drugs do, it, it will end up saving money, too. But saving your well, life is more important. Well, they'll find a way to fix that. <laughs> yeah, I guess they will. But saving your life is even more important. So that's BP-157. So then everybody knows about growth hormone and that growth hormone as it is, if you just give human growth hormone, there are many side effects. And one of them is type 1 or 2 diabetes, which is very dangerous, and autoimmune diseases. You to can the, get that from taking growth right, hormone? Mm -hmm, from human growth hormone. Yeah. So the true growth hormone from a human source is, is basically what it's called, not human source, but it causes antibodies. It causes you to have antibodies to your uh, pancreas. So it looks like it. Mm -hmm. So that's why we don't use pure growth hormone. Okay. So, and and the FDA doesn't want us to use it, and the DEA doesn't want us to use it, and that's reasonably so. Because there's been a lot of abuse of that right. by athletes trying mm -hmm. to get super strong, super big. Right. But as you get older, at first, testosterone will stimulate your growth hormone, and at a certain point, it stops stimulating it right. in some people, not everyone. <laughs> But, um, There's a point at which your body's supposed to be grown. So, <laughs> no, you know. your body's supposed to get old and die. But, yeah. you know, this is, is to keep us healthier as we get old so that we don't get rickety and, and lose our muscle and lose mm -hmm. our balance and everything else that growth hormone helps us with. Okay. It helps us replace damaged tissue, basically. And, and that's what happens when you get old. You don't replace the damaged tissue. It just stays there. So the, so the second one is called CJC-1295. Plus epimoralin. Uh huh. Does and those are both out? secretagogues. They're both what we call secretagogues. That means they stimulate your own pituitary to make growth hormone. So your own growth hormone is fine. It's not going to cause diabetes. But well, it's like anti rejection drugs. If you have a surgical replacement of some organ or tissue in the mm -hmm. body, you have to take anti rejection mm -hmm. drugs because your body recognizes, hey, that's not mine. Mm -hmm. And try to send it and out. Or try to kill, 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 it. Yeah. kill it and all the tissues that look like it. Right. So this is not that. This is a stimulatory hormone that makes your own growth hormone go up and then makes you have the same effect as if your growth hormone was when you were 40, 50, mm -hmm. not, or even 30. So that's what we're shooting for, not super physiologic growth hormone, but we're, sh we're shooting for normal, healthy, young growth hormone. And the magic word is secretagogue. That's secretagogue what is what these two are called. It's a peptide, and it is it's like a um, a protein hormone that comes from the hypothalamus that goes to your pituitary. It looks a lot like that and stimulates the uh, pituitary in that way. So that's how you get better growth hormone, not by giving you growth hormone, but by stimulating your own. But this particular one, the stimulation of the growth hormone, you don't want to do on a consistent 24-7 basis. Right. 
So what they recommend is that you take these for no more than five days at a time, take mm-hmm. two days off, then take another five-day right. cycle right. if you're taking them. And right, because your own pituitary has to kind of regroup. After it's been stimulated for a while, it has to have a rest, basically, mm-hmm. and so that you don't become immune to this. You don't want to have your system or your body go, ah, I'm not, gonna, I'm not responding to that. So that two days helps you regroup and then uh, stimulate the pituitary again. But we use this for people who have lost a lot of bone, muscle, osteoporosis. Uh, we also use it for um, just people who are aging and their skin's falling off of them. It helps burn fat, so it helps uh, make help people lose weight but also gain muscle. So, so, so there are some peptides, like the two that we've been talking about, mm-hmm. or three that we've been talking about, mm-hmm. that are medicinal in nature, mm-hmm. that help your body restore its strength, its functionality. But there are some that are more aesthetic, that mm-hmm. are used for aesthetic things. Mm-hmm. And the next one, <laughs> GHK-CU. CU is the is the term for copper, and that's what it means. It's it's a protein plus copper, and it's a collagen stimulator and an aesthetic protein. Which, so so here's the problem. The problem is when you get old, you lose the ability to to replenish your collagen. So your face sags. You dry up. Your and arms shrivel. get all these nasty yeah. things on them, where your skin starts falling off your arms and your legs. You've seen those people with the, you know, the the big rolls over their knees, and I mean, you, your skin. It's almost like you're in somebody else's body. That's it's too big, and it's it's flopping around. Your skin just doesn't ela- doesn't have elastic tissue. So this is a a, a peptide that actually stimulates elastic tissue to to suck it back in and to make collagen to hold it in. So it makes elastic tissue and collagen. And you can use it as a shot that get helps the skin all over your body. I mean, I mean this is going to help us with our uh, aesthetic practice with our our spa because when we use fillers, it's going to make the fillers last longer, it's going to make them look better. Mm-hmm. It's going to make the skin have better texture, but it also can be used for Burns. If somebody has a burn, it's going to help them heal better. The collagen will come back. And it won't over. It won't scar. I just had a friend who burned herself severely and had to have uh, skin repl- skin graft. So would this help the new skin become yes. fluid and flexible? And, and yeah, it would. It would make okay. it heal better and not scar down as much. Yeah. So I'm yeah. not sure it would look perfectly like skin, mm. but I mean I haven't seen that study, but it would help it heal faster, which is a big deal with with burns. You have to get them to heal and close over. Your skin is what protects you from all of the environment. So that's very important. It also um, can help other conditions like um, osteoporosis. It helps the bone build. How does it help with COPD? It, hel- it, it, helps, heal the, um, it helps heal the alveoli that keep popping and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, the little sacs. I love to ask you questions you weren't expecting. You always know the answer to those. Well, everybody asks me questions all day, so yeah. I should know so the you're answer. Used to, should just push that button. Right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you do that on purpose. I do. Um, I don't know how this works, but it helps with metastatic colon cancer, and it helps people after radiation therapy. That I get because radiation therapy damages the skin and the right. collagen below it, and so right. it should help you. Uh, recover yeah. after that. But the colon cancer, you don't really... I don't understand how that works exactly, and they didn't right. explain it. So fine lines and wrinkles, sagging skin. I mean, basically, you could take a shot and uh, maybe not have a facelift. <laughs> well, there, there's, there's one more that we want to talk about, yes. and, and it is not an aesthetic one. It goes mm-hmm. back to the medical ones. It's called thymosin A1, mm-hmm. and it's an immune modulator. I read that off the paper. I yes. don't know it. So an cool. immune modulator means that, you know, your your white cells, your T cells are white cells that help your immune system gobble up cancer cells. Or if they're overactive, they become autoimmune cells. They attack your own body. So this is a modulator. If If you have an autoimmune disease, it calms it down and makes them more normal. They have normal targets, not targets that are part of your body. And if you don't have enough of the T cells like in AIDS or in... Uh, other um, immune deficient diseases, it brings them up. And it helps after chemotherapy when your immune system is tanked. So, and it brings you back after chemotherapy. So these are just five of 200. And they, they sound <laughs> miraculous individually. Mm-hmm. The combination of all of them is exciting to learn about. And the, the hope and the theory is that as scientists continue to look at these different peptides. Communicators. They're that, telling your body what to do. That, that We don't even know where it's all going to go. 
It's just no, very exciting in medicine. It's very, it's very uh, preventive, too. Yes. And it's very based on preventing disease, but also healing it faster and with fewer um, side, effects. side effects. And they, they pitch these by saying, really, there's no side effects except in the Victoza, there's reflux. That's it. That's what they say for, for all of them. And that would be amazing for many of these diseases. And, and in, terms, in terms of production and marketing, they deal, the concerns are about uh, not taking them orally unless you find some kind of a coating or capsulization that will work. And they're working work. on that. And the refrigeration. Mm -hmm. And then the injection process for the ones that are sub-Q injections. Mm -hmm. That's so. the biggest issue to me yeah. is how patients can take it and, and following the rules and keeping it in the refrigerator and remembering to take it and that kind of thing. If you don't have it right in front of you in your bathroom, then and when you go you may, to bed at night, yeah, yeah, you may not, may not remember. remember. To take it. So yeah. that's the biggest issue is compliance. Compliance. All right. As always, thank you very much for listening. We'll see you back next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.